Chapter One of Nutcracker and Mouse King. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sandra Cullen. Nutcracker and Mouse King by E. T. A. Hoffman. Chapter One. Christmas Eve. During the long, long day of the 24th of December, the children of Dr. Stahlbaum were not permitted to enter the parlour, much less the adjoining drawing room. Frederick and Maria sat nestled together in a corner of the back chamber. Dusky twilight had come on, and they felt quite gloomy and fearful, for, as was commonly the case on this day, no light was brought into them. Fred, in great secrecy and in a whisper, informed his little sister, she was only just seven years old, that ever since morning he had heard a rustling and a rattling, and now and then a gentle knocking in the forbidden chambers. Not long ago, also, he had seen a little dark man, with a large chest under his arm, gliding softly through the entry, but he knew very well that it was nobody but Godfather Drosselmeyer. Upon this, Maria clapped her little hands together for joy and exclaimed, Ah, what beautiful things has Godfather Drosselmeyer made up for us this time? Counselor Drosselmeyer was not a very handsome man. He was small and thin, had many wrinkles in his face, over his right eye he had a large black patch, and he was without hair, for which reason he wore a very nice white wig. This was made of glass, however, and was a very ingenious piece of work. The godfather himself was very ingenious also. He understood all about clocks and watches, and could even make them. Accordingly, when any one of the beautiful clocks in Dr. Stahlbaum's house was sick and could not sing, Godfather Drosselmeyer would have to attend to it. He would then take off his glass wig, pull off his brown coat, put on a blue apron and pierce the clock with sharp pointed instruments, which usually caused little Maria a great deal of anxiety. But it did the clock no harm. On the contrary, it became quite lively again, and began at once right merrily to rattle, and to strike, and to sing, so that it was a pleasure to all who heard it. Whenever he came, he always brought something pretty in his pocket for the children, sometimes a little man who moved his eyes and made a bow, at others a box from which a little bird hopped out when it was opened, sometimes one thing, sometimes another. When Christmas Eve came, he had always a beautiful piece of work prepared for them, which had cost him a great deal of trouble, and on this account it was always carefully preserved by their parents, after he had given it to them. Ah, what beautiful present has Godfather Drosselmeyer made for us this time, exclaimed Maria. It was Fred's opinion that this time it could be nothing else than a castle in which all kinds of fine soldiers marched up and down and went through their exercises. Then other soldiers would come and try and break into the castle. But the soldiers within would fire off their cannon very bravely until all roared and cracked again. No, no, cried Maria, interrupting him. Godfather Drosselmeyer has told me of a lovely garden where there is a great lake upon which beautiful swans swim about with golden collars around their necks and sing their sweetest songs. Then there comes a little girl out of the garden down along the lake and coaxes the swans to the shore and feeds them with sweet cake. Swans never eat cake, interrupted Fred somewhat roughly, and even Godfather Drosselmeyer himself can't make a whole garden. After all, we have little good of his playthings. They are all taken right away from us again. I like what Papa and Mama give us so much better, for we can keep their presents for ourselves and do as we please with them. 
the children now began once more to guess what it could be this time. Maria thought that Miss Truncheon, her great doll, was growing very old, for she fell almost every moment upon the floor, and more awkwardly than ever, which could not happen without leaving sad marks upon her face, and as to neatness in dress, this was now altogether out of the question with her. Scolding did not help the matter in the least. Frederick declared, on the other hand, that a bay horse was wanting in his stable, and his troops were very deficient in cavalry, as his papa very well knew. By this time it had become quite dark. Frederick and Maria sat close together, and did not venture again to speak a word. It seemed now as if soft wings rustled around them, and very distant but sweet music was heard at intervals. At this moment a shrill sound broke upon their ears. Kling, ling, kling, ling! The doors flew wide open, and such a dazzling light broke out from the great chamber, that with the loud exclamation, Aha! the children stood fixed at the threshold. But Papa and Mamma stepped to the door, took them by the hand and said, Come, come, dear children, and see what Christmas has brought you this year. End of chapter one.